And welcome to another edition of All American Kayak Series podcast called The Doc Talk. What's happening, folks? It's me, Gene. We are going on here with another episode of our interview series of getting to know. And this one, man, is so long overdue, it's not even funny. Uh, We were set to have uh, this man on here long, long time ago. Um, and, uh, with work schedules, life and everything else, it just kind of slowed things down, but we got him here today. So let's go ahead and bring him in your 2023 angler of the year, Mr. Tyler Cole. What's happening champ? Oh, we're hanging in there. We're hanging in there. <laughs> That's right. Dude, this one, uh, this one was long overdue, man. We, uh, we wanted to do this like when the season wrapped up there, like October range or whatever, November, but. Yeah, with everything going on, it's just been nuts. Yeah, it gets crazy busy, that's for sure. Indeed. So, dude, you know, from the moment I met you, I mean, you've been around the block, and I could tell that. You, you're, a season, you're a salty old dog, you know, and I can tell that. <laughs> and I knew that the first time I met you when you were uh, – when I. When we actually got a chance to chat and talk, was it Lewis yep. and Clark? Yep, um, South Dakota. Yeah, and uh, and get to know. And I had more fun just sitting back watching y'all kind of hack <laughs> on each other and talk with each other because that was what an amazing you know group of anglers in one in one yeah. household to to be included in that was uh, dude. I I, w- I was very grateful. It was very thankful to be there and uh, be, yeah. be crashing on the couch, but. You have like your own Tyler way of doing things, man. It's not, you break from the norm in a lot of cases, but brother, I have uh, done a couple interviews now for doc talk that are in the library. That'll be airing after your yours does. And we all agree, dude, you had a year of years, man, in this sport, when you get in a zone, that's one thing, but you are not just in a zone. You own the freaking zone, man. Yeah. How did that how did that feel, man, for this entire season to just be hitting it on all eight cylinders? It was, it was completely crazy because I literally, I came into this year, like not planning to pre-fish a lot and just kind of show up and just, just fish my style, trust my, trust my instincts and do it, you know, instead of spending the three, four, five days, you know, and I mean, our schedule this year, it really like, when it kicked off in Texas, like I, we go, we've been going to Texas for seven years. I've been fortunate. I've in seven years, I've won one tournament down there and I haven't placed anywhere near in any of the rest of them. And so <laughs> that place has had my number for a long time. And I always, I always overthought it and I just, just didn't just go fishing, you know, right. and that's the whole year this year. That's all I did was just go fishing. You know, dude, I'll tell you this, what stamped it home for me was literally our final, final time as a group, as the all American out on the water. And and this was the scene that, that folks need to understand. We're at the national or our, our series championship, right? There wasn't that many of us. So no. we're all like, whatever. Um, one cool thing about that is you can all get together and have dinner. And we did. Friday night after day one comp, you're sitting in the lead. Yep. Um, and I think it was uh, maybe Andy was in second or Stoney was one of the two. Those guys were those guys yeah. were close to you, but it was clear you were sitting on a bag of like some really special fish where, yeah. you know, the spot, the area that you found. Well, all of us at dinner that night make a vote and decide let's turn the championship into a two day deal. Um, and then for day three, let's just go have fun. Let's go fishing. And somebody pops up on their phone and goes, what about this bussy break place? That was me. (laughs) And, and we all start looking at it and we're like, has anybody been there? We're all like, nope, we haven't, but it's a bucket list. And there's like double digit bass in that joint. Lots of them. So we're all like, well, shoot, let's give it a whirl, man. Let's go ahead and give it a try. We get down there, folks, and I want you to understand this. There's, what, six six of us or so that are yeah. down there? Yep. And I'm paddling around with just some straight hammers, you know, all floating around me. And 
we head off into this place and it's 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 bayou looking but it's also got like a big rice lake feel to it um fields of timber and you know it's got a little truman feel you know type thing but we get way out to this break wall area here of nothing but cypress trees and we get to fishing within 10 minutes guys we had we had all agreed on this is that we were just going to submit fish through facebook you know we're just going to call it a day that way uh nothing real special 25 bucks ahead let's go folks it wasn't 10 minutes after arriving to said destination that our champ here just starts lighting up the damn facebook messenger with fish it was proof to me. It was that final stamp that when you're just there, man, you're there. You had no real predetermined idea of what this place was going to look like. You just jumped on there the same as the rest of us. And bro, the fish were just like, hello, yeah. Mr. Cole. I think I'll bite what you're offering. Today. Right. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I that's mean, the only, the only reason I'd heard about that place was because Alton Jones Jr. won the MLF there. And right. Right. Like any, any caught like a 1282. So then I jumped on a Facebook page called Busty Break Lunkers and they're posting 12 pounders, 15 pounders every week. Dang. And so I'm looking at that. I almost skipped the championship. <laughs> I almost did. I literally was just going to go to Busty for a week, come back and fish the final day, catch one fish. And then I had my AOI wrapped up. <laughs> and <laughs> but that'd have been a I dick just, move man all right i know i know i couldn't do it I'm like no i gotta i gotta at least try and get my butt kicked down here so but no man that was i just i wanted to just congratulate you and and it's you know it's i you know me i'm i'm not a i'm not a young dude i've been around the block enough to know and when you see something special taking place man and that is exactly what it was to watch you go to work this year man um, it was something special, the, the, what you were able to do this year, dude. And I, and I hope it, hope it, uh, was, you know, it, at least felt as damn good as it looked, man. Cause it was, it was some cool stuff to see you, uh, tearing them up out there. Yeah. My wife actually got used to me bringing home checks. So like <laughs> the first couple of times that I didn't bring a check home, she's like, uh, what? <laughs> you stopped by the casino on the way home. What the hell? <laughs> right. No, I mean, I like I just pulled up Tourney X and I had I had nine first place finishes. That's online and live, and twenty eight top ten finishes this year. You know, yeah, that was a year, brother. Yeah, yeah, it was. I got I ended up second in Iowa Angler of the Year. I I kind of tripped and fell. I was leading by two points going into the final event, and me and the guy that wanted he we fished the exact same way and he just got the bites and i didn't and, but and that was well, that, a that was a deal that totally solidified it for me because i put a ton of time in on that lake to try to find a bunch of new stuff instead of just doing what i normally do and it ended up biting me i just i started running around in circles like oh i caught a big one over here i caught a big one over here i caught a big you know yep. and you just you don't get into the rhythm isn't that so, the truth, man? We get in our own way. You know, we get run over by our own train of thought half the yeah. time out there. I I tell everybody that tournament fishing is 90% mental. Oh, yeah. Any any of us. There's yep. not a person that that will put their money in the ring that can't go to any, any lake and catch five bass for a limit. Nobody. There's not a person that would join. It's once you, you realize all that money's on the line and your wheels start spinning. And now all of a sudden you've pre-fished for two, three days and you're like, all right, I got a good pattern. No, you had a good pattern. Yeah. It might not hold. I've never had a pattern hold. I was going to say, chances are it won't hold. That's no. the thing. No. If it Texas, does, you're lucky. Let's go back to Texas. First tournament of the year. I literally, we showed up, we went down a week early, showed up, pre-fished. I found a real nice L off the main river, clear up upstream and i'm like this if they're it's just like lacrosse if fish are gonna spawn they're gonna be spawning in there it's gonna be clear water i literally i pull in on a sunday or monday i can't remember what it was and put up 95 inches in like 20 minutes i'm like money turned around left 
Well, I'd never researched in my life how long it takes for a bass to spawn. <laughs> I can tell you if they're gone by Friday <laughs> and you're sitting there with nothing but males, you know, and it was just, and I was so committed to that spot that there was, I couldn't pull out and go somewhere else, you know? So, right. I just, I, I scratched out the best limit I could and I was sitting in tenth, and then I decided to just completely change my plan. And I had an area that I felt like I could pull five out of the reeds and I pulled three cause it was super cold that second morning. Yeah, it was. And then I decided I was going to take another, I was going to fish there till like nine o'clock and then I was going to go down to the next arm and just start fishing that because I caught a couple fish down there in pre-fishing. And I, one little thing set me off to put up 104 inches on day two. Right, was, right. And I was just, you know, paying attention to detail. If I'd have missed, if I'd have missed that fish taken off out of that grass, I'd have never put together what I did. Right. Isn't that funny too, man? It's like on, the, on those days when things come together, uh, be it a tournament, be it a day of fishing, it'll be one key yep. piece that you that you notice. Yep. You know, I I, I remember we were talk, when we talked about Lewis and Clark there, I remember their day two, going into the day I was sitting in fifth place. It was fishing tight. Um, there was like, I think, 40 of us, 50 of us, and yep. there were only like, nine ten limits and yeah. i was one of one of the lucky ones that trash fished my way to a limit on day one but on day two it was one tiny little decision here and i don't know i'd love to say that i had you know some you know championship woosa breakfast that that led me to this but it was just a, a decision that was made and that was about two hours in i had only put one fish in the boat and when i looked at the standings well i was in fifth and now i'm in 11. and i'm like okay, hold on. Guys are catching them now. And in my head, instead of freaking out and worrying what I, what it told me was, I bet you what I said was going to happen is actually starting to happen. And that is the river starting to fish normal. Now he was yeah. just still in a funk and that's why fish were all over the place, but now things are coming back. So it's kind of coming to us. So yeah. I stopped junk fishing and started fishing the river system, how I know how to fish and then sure as hell, bang, yeah. bang, bang. So it was that one little decision of do you freak or do you go, Oh, okay. Well, this probably means yeah. this instead. Right. And it's uh that's one of the things I love about the sport, man. You, you picked up on the sharking and that told yeah. you what you needed to know about that sharking. Yeah. And yep. bam. <laughs> and that's, I mean, and it's, and it, it was crazy that that, that pattern was there with the weather we had that morning. I mean, it was 34 right. degrees, you know, and that really affects, southern bass and to have them sitting in like i like i told everybody i don't know why they were there but i'm pretty sure they were just up there sunning themselves and they were just going to eat while they were doing it you know because that's right i literally pulled everything out of a foot and a half of water or less that's crazy stuff man because i remember lake of the pines dude and i couldn't get i really couldn't get bit super shallow to save my save my tail the fish that i caught on that day, it was just uh, more junk fishing around and I, you know, throwing a spinner bait around a jackhammer. Yep. Um, and then uh, I think dragging a jig for a couple later in the day, you know, yeah. type of stuff. It was, t it was tough going, but you were, you were in a different, I was in a complete different area of the lake though. So yeah. further, further down for sure. Yep. Good stuff, man. You know, and that's, that's one of the things when, when, when people are getting to know, I mean, you've been doing this, when when did you first get into a kayak man when did that first happen when you started fishing out of a kayak when when did that first happen 20 i think it was 2014 when i almost drowned oh, that's right i remember this we've talked about this yeah, yeah. I got it. my uncle called and he's like hey let's go fish the river my brother's got a couple of these cheap kayaks i'm like all right cool and we went out and just wrecked the walleyes. I mean, we had we had such a blast because that's all I ever fished was walleyes and crappies. And we come to this little little ripple section, and down I went. And I got caught inside it, and it filled up with water and sunk. And I was still in it. I couldn't get my legs out of it. And it was literally oh, three weeks after that that I bought my first. I bought an old town trip angler ten 
sit in and then it was tw late 2016 i had a buddy of mine call me and he's like hey they got these bass tournaments for kayaks they're online i'm like oh yeah like, <laughs> who fishes for those stupid things you know he's like they pay money i'm like well heck i can play this game you know and then back then All it right. was only three fish three fish a month you know wow and it was public, private, didn't matter. You could fish anything back then. And I remember it was it was October for the KBF. And I led all month. Well, I was tied with I was tied with Ken Shippey and he had already qualified. So we're both sitting at like fifty nine and three quarter. And then Kevin Will, I took four days off and I went down to southern Iowa and I literally just lay copped. And I broke off one of the biggest bass I've ever hooked in the state of Iowa. And I got back on Sunday night and I'm like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> and <laughs> girlfriend at the time literally rolls me over at 10 o'clock and she said, hey, some guy just passed you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Well, here it was a buddy of mine that I actually fished with at my first live event ever. We actually camped together. He beat me by a quarter inch in like oh, four hours of fishing, you know. <laughs> and so that's when I decided, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go buy some bass rods and I'm not going to get my butt kicked anymore. <laughs> and I, I literally, I spent all winter just, just studying and just trying to just trying to soak and that was so 2017 was my first live year and nice. i won i won the i angler of the year in iowa never placed out of the top five all year long and then i won the tournament of champions in texas that year and then 2018 i ended up at hobie worlds in sweden and i really didn't i'd I really didn't fish hard back here. I think I ended up third for AOI that year, even after dropping an event. And then 2019, well, 20, 2018 was the year of the the drama. And then 2019, I, I haven't judged a fish since, well, besides the Truman Classic, that's the only place I'll judge a fish. Yep. Was... In 2019, I come in and I won the Angler of the Year in Iowa by 120 points. I was out to prove a point. <laughs> right. Just to put the shut the... <laughs> yeah, that's slam exactly, the door on that. That's exactly what it was. It was, I mean, yeah. it was, I get where guys were coming from, but that's not the reason I'm as good as I am because they kept saying that I'm on Tourney X looking up where they caught fish. Sure. And then going there, no, sorry, that's not how it works. It's not how Tourney X worked at the time. It's still not how it works today. No. Well, and I think it's important that, you know, people understand, like with the All-American, um, I've stepped now into your to your shoes uh, that, uh, that you had yeah. there. We don't judge fish from our position. We don't even have access to that section of Tourney X. That nope. remains with our, our leader and uh, the director of the entire organization. That's Josh yep. Booth. Yep. And, and should he did need an additional judge, he goes and gets one outside right. of, you know, the whole thing. So, yeah, it's yep. just because we're the talking heads in those positions, people, you know, right. don't don't understand that. But, yeah, and, and, that's, and that's people I used to ask me. that. They used to ask me that all the time. They're like, well, what about what about this fish? And it's like, I, you got to talk to Josh like I'd. I can look at it on your post, but that's about it. Yeah. So, and for those of you that are wondering what the drama was that we're talking, I'll give you the short version of this. Uh, because Tyler was working and uh, and part of uh, an organization, and he was having a phenomenal year. There were there were of course some talking heads online because you get behind a keyboard and you feel that the the need to try to jump to to conclusions in a hurry without having full details. Um, they accused Tyler of, you know, having access to, to information. This and that was back in 2018, 2019, yeah. or 2017, whatever it was. 2017, 2018, yeah. yeah. No, it's, uh, and, and I'll, I'll say this just flat out, and I have absolutely zero problem saying this. The fact that I know you enough 
I know you well enough. No, we didn't grow up together. No, we just met a couple of years ago, but I know you enough to know that you have right. way too much integrity for that shit. You know, I, I wouldn't be fishing next to right. or calling. I call you a friend of mine and I, and I believe, you know, in that 100%, I wouldn't have fished a series myself. Wouldn't put my name or my nonprofit's name anywhere near something. If I thought something fishy was going on, I know who right. you are, you know, and I know, know the way you operate. People just, you know, if you want to hate right. on something, hate on the fact of getting your ass kicked by this dude because he can do it. <laughs> right. And that's, you know, it's like I said, you can, I could, I could, well, we could go out. I, I have an open invite to anybody. I'll give them any, they can pick any lake I've ever fished. I'll give them my waypoints and I'll still go fishing. Like I, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I, I'm not, that's not, if I'm going to get my butt kicked, I'm going to get my butt kicked. That's just the way it is. You know, I mean, I'll tell you, brother, after bussy break, the bad thing that come out of this is I'm not gambling against you again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fish against you, but I ain't putting money on it anymore. <laughs> well, that's one of my close friends from grade school. I, he tell he tells people all the time. He's like, don't give him motivation. <laughs> exactly. said, if you motivate him, he will like it. Yeah. It, it sends me to a different level competitively, you know, and yeah. I just like, I literally, I'll, I'll scour maps constantly just to, just to find that little thing that's different, you know, like, yeah, you know, and I mean, sometimes it's just as easy as you just wash your hands, you take the beat and then you just go fishing and it ends up working out. I mean, St. Clair, I was sitting in seventh or eighth after day one and Tim, my buddy Tim was out there and we were all rooming in the same place. And I literally, I looked at him and he's like, well, I only caught four fish today. I'm like, well, let's go fishing tomorrow then. I said, I got, I got a little spot up north. And we both went up there and put up middle 90s, you know. That's just, freaking awesome. We literally sat 20 feet apart all day long, just up and down in the waves. And it was about one o'clock and I, I went to stand up to do something. I had sea legs real bad. And I told him, I said, you know, I said, if we weren't catching so many fish, I said, we'd probably say, screw this and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, you know, you made a statement there, man. And this, I think for those of you at home that are, that are, you know, wanting to take your game to the next level, there's, there's a, a key piece of information here. Um, and I'll back this up with a, with a small story, but you had made the statement that, You'll scour maps because you're looking for that one little thing. Yeah. Now, anybody who's fishing tournaments, for the most part, you could pretty well guess, most people do map study. I mean, it's not a big surprise. It's part of the process. Look at the map. Look at your contours. Look at Google Earth. Go through this. Now, I'll say it's a smaller percentage of those individuals that actually know what they're looking for. Right. Some just like to go through the process. They're not 100% in tune with what is a channel swing? What is a, a ditch? What is a, what's a, a flat spot or a, a, a flat compared to a, a hump and a, and a high spot, you know, little variations like that. That's, that's a smaller percentage, but it's the tiny little details that literally separate the upper 1% from the rest of the 99. I had the opportunity um, over the course of the last 10, 15 years, I have rubbed shoulders with some of the best uh, anglers in our sport. I've had the opportunity to be in a boat with several of them and as a marshal on some of those events and watch them go to work and talk with them throughout the day about, you know, decision-making and why they're, you know, just ask them what made you uh, change that bait at that time? What were you thinking? You know, and that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to get in their head, you know, most guys are asking them how they can get a sponsor, this and that. Type thing. Right. I'm more interested as to why they retied at that specific time was my interest. Yeah. But the one thing, and in watching them, I'll tell you when a guy that's been fishing professionally for 25 years goes fishing down a bank on a river and he's pitching and flipping a jig. And then you and I go fishing down that river, pitching and flipping a jig. We're going to look the same. The difference will be he'll get an extra cast inside where we're casting every say 12 to 18. He's yep. dropping every nine. Yep. He's just a little more efficient. He's just a little more efficient with his casting and he's accurate. You know what I mean? So it's, 
that's literally the difference between the best and the guys just coming in, you know, right. through there. And so and, what you were saying on that detail, man, that's key. And that's so like when I taught myself to, to bass fish, like I literally went out and I fished three seasons, literally just every day I fished. If I didn't fish four days a week, I was fishing seven, just depended on when I had my daughters. And I would take detailed notes. Water temp. Water temp's the biggest thing. If you ever see me show up to a tournament and I'm and I'm not there like until it's lines in, the first thing I'm gonna ask you, what's the water temp? Because that dictates what I'm doing, where I'm going. You know, then weather. Then, you know, your currents, your grasses, whatever you're going to fish. But that water temp determines everything with these fish. You know, so many people spend so much time learning how to fish a lure. And I had an old boy from Nebraska tell me, he goes, I don't care what you throw at them. He goes, it's where you're throwing it. He goes, it makes more difference than anything in this world. 100%. And I, that's something that I taught myself and I taught myself and I taught myself. And then like, I had, a, I got a real special body of water here in the Eastern part of Iowa. So it's a, it's a spring fed lake. It comes straight out of trout stream. So there's trout eaters in it. There's giant fish in it. And spawn is literally two and a half months from the wow. bottom of the lake to the top of the lake. And so Dang. like, so I can literally start at the bottom and fish post spawn fish that have moved into normal patterns. And I can go clear to the top of the lake and fish pre-spawn fish that are still in 55 degree water. And so that, that really hit, it advanced me a lot quicker than just being on a regular lake, you know? Sure. Sure. But, but water temp, take notes take notes take notes take notes i don't care what you think you can remember take notes because you're literally going to turn right back around the following year and you're going to fish the exact same conditions again doesn't matter whether you're in minnesota or you're in texas there's if my water temps 55 degrees in texas in march all right that's middle of april in iowa end of april that's pre-spawn. It's time to go fishing, you know, and that's, that's how I've taught myself. And it's, it's helped me so much. Like I keep yeah. things super simple. You know, I'm, I'm a big jig fisherman. I'm a big frog fisherman, spinnerbait. I, I, Texas was the first time I've thrown a jackhammer since the TOC. And that was, I was throwing a a Bassett brand back then. And that's what I won that TOC on in Texas. And I, and I fished the chatterbait like a jig because they <laughs> yep. wouldn't eat it on a straight crawl, you know? And it's just, you know, you, you can really break it down from that water temp. Water temp is everything. You know, and that's the key is like, now for some guys, they're more concerned with the clarity or, or this or that, that's their first go-to, but for you, your system temp is where you start everything in there. Yep. You know, you made a statement about, you know, and throwing in the right place is most important. This was every so once in a while, somebody will come along and drop you a piece of information that you lock in your head. Folks at home, that was the piece of information you should lock in your head because what was passed on to me by Mr. Edwin Evers himself at the very first Red Crest, um, I was at the Nitro booth because I was actually, I uh, had my Nitro on order. It was coming in uh, my new boat. And I was sitting over there talking with some of these guys and Edwin Evers, I've always had, you know, just such admiration. I love the, the dude is a just ultra high competitor, man. He is, he's yeah. some, you know, he could rub some people wrong, I think because of how competitive he gets, but I, I love the dude. And he told me, he says, I want you to remember this. You can throw the wrong lure in the right place and you'll get healthy compared to if you throw the right exact lure in the wrong place. Exactly. You know, it, he's like, it's more important about where you go. Um, and he said, and don't get caught on spots. Stop thinking spots, start right. thinking areas. areas. Yep. Yeah. You know, those are the two biggest pieces, man. And I walked away from that red crest going, okay, I got the writing this shit down. I'm never yep. going to forget this. So I, to hear you, hear you echo that. That's awesome. That's stuff, man. Before, before live scope, I never used electronics to find fish ever. I would yep. literally, and that same deal, I would literally go out and look for areas, hard, hard bottoms, 
sunken structure that nobody else can see you yep. know the, the out of the way stuff that that everybody just you know if you got 10 guys on a lake and they're all in the same area they're all going to cast the same stick sticking out of the water but only about two of them are going to slow down and actually fish that submerged structure and it's it makes a huge difference yeah some of the best fishing i've ever found are just these little isolated areas i never even saw in my electronics i mean i've got got a really nice garmin set up in my yak and had one in my boat for a lot of years and um my that feeling with the bottom contact when i'm pulling back a jig or whatever and having the right gear where you can tell am i rolling across wood am i rolling across rock sand what am i what am i doing you know what's the feedback telling me i come across this little rock pile with a little bit of wood there was there there were some twigs in there and i never even saw it and as i was pulling across the thing a smallie smacked it and so i'm like okay so i started like maneuvering my kayak around it dude i sat on there and i bet you i jacked eight nine fish from that place and i was like holy moses you know and i never even i'd never even seen it i just happened to be you know trolling a, a shoreline so you're right man it's uh yep. you pay pay attention to that stuff that's that's super that's, cool that's so, dude, out of all of this year out of everything that you did is there one event that sticks out more than another that just like really special to, to be stuck in your head for the year or was, was it all kind of just this big whirlwind <laughs> taking place i can't i can't even count one like right. it was, like my big thing is i i love to watch people win like you know, I like watching the guys that I've watched. You know, I've been in a director role since 2017, you know, in one way, shape, or form with right. multiple different organizations. And, you know, I've watched guys come from literally showing up with a paddle kayak to, you know, cash and checks at tournaments, you know. And I, I got to hand, you know, Kevin Swan, I got to hand him a trophy this year which was awesome like he is he's an amazing fisherman an amazing friend you know and it's he's like, a good dude man yeah he's good people you know and, and like my crew that the crew that i travel with like i <laughs> i couldn't ask for a better bunch you know i mean Jordan, it is a motley like, crew baby it is you know <laughs> and i mean and we've been together for a long time you know and I mean, whether we're competitors or not, it's still at the end of the day, like, you know, we, we went to Texas, took the top three spots, you know, and. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it's just, it's always, always special traveling with them and having a good time. And, you know. And let's talk about one of those special things because it is, I mean, you guys are like, you know, adopted brothers out there for sure. Yeah. You know, it's in the kayak fishing, you know, world but there is high competition there so much yeah. to the point that literally permanently stamping one's body was <laughs> on the line this year you and jb had yourselves a bet jeremy brandis and you uh, that whoever what was it aoi at the end of the year is that how it was going to work out whoever's highest in the points uh oh aoi there you are yep highest in the point the loser the loser had to had to get the tattoo and if I if I would have lost, I'd had to get a chatterbait, a JB brand chatterbait. And then he got the TC series frog. I'm gonna see why we're talking about this here. I'm gonna see if I can pull this up here. Jeremy Brandis friend. There we go. I mean it's gotta be yeah, there it is. It's right there. So yeah, we're gonna go yeah. ahead and show this because JB being um uh, being a man and and being good yep. to his word. He saw fit to go ahead and get this done. So we'll add this in here. Bang. We have ourselves a TC labeled frog was with tattoo. What? That's a good looking tat too, man. I yeah. mean, that's good. That's yeah, good. They did an awesome. Well, see, we, we had this all down to where we were going to get them on our feet. So then they were in every, every tourney X picture. <laughs> on your feet. Ouch. But he he won up to it and put it right there on his arm. Yeah. So that's awesome stuff, man. That is that is too cool. And uh 
you know, the, the friendships that you make along the way. And yeah. like I said, I got a, I got the opportunity to hang out with you guys, man. And it is a special group with Tim and Mike and yeah. uh, Casey and, you know, yeah. all, all you guys together, man. Yeah. Um, speaking of watching guys do well, you had to have a huge smile on your face watching the most recent Hobie boss tournament, of champion yeah. winner take that because i'll tell you during his interview that's going to be airing very soon he talks about you quite a bit with the <laughs> utmost respect oh, that yeah. you were you were one of the guys early in his in his days that that he looked up to he still looks up to you yep. and he, he is what a what a very cool young man he is dude that, yep. I, I love that interview but how awesome was that watching brady go close that thing out man he and I, his mom those photos I literally, I, I sat at home, I sat at my kitchen table and I watched it in tears. Like, yeah, you know, I know how hard that kids work. Like I used to sign his waiver forms for him as his dad. And so it's always <laughs> been an ongoing joke that he's been, you know, my boy. And I mean, that kid, he, he's put in so much work and I mean, he's gone. It's like he said, like he literally brought me to tears. Like when he's like, I don't win tournaments like that. I tell right. you, like that, that got me. Cause I mean, that kid has put in work in his life to get where he's at, you know, and his mom, you got to give a bo big shout out to Bobby. Like, hell yeah. You know, they're, and they're, they're the two greatest people in the world. And I mean, they're like, Bobby sent me cookies. Like she's, she's so great. That's you know? awesome. And yeah. And I mean, it's, uh, they are, they're, they're two special people. And I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see where they go with the new Hobie dealership. Yep. And I mean, that should be awesome for them. I mean, cause there's no two better people to work with. You know, and that's, that's part of it that, that really got it for me is what I, by the time I left this interview, I realized what was most important to me about the fact of with him winning was something we don't see in today's world that much. The good guys got one, man. You know what? One of the good guys brought it home and he talk about right. deserving it harder. And I don't mean any disrespect to anybody else out there, but this is talking more about just people who, who the, this young man is at his heart and who he is as a person. He, he is one of the good ones. And so, yeah, watching, Watching him go out there, Marty Hughes had to just be, you know, blown up with pride watching Brady go out there because Brady's a product of Marty's early, you know, uh, uh, fishing program for youth coming through there. And so that had to just be extra, extra special for him to, to see that go through. Um, and you know, people are, are real good people when there's so many other people that can celebrate in their success, right? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. I see your camera locking up a little bit again. How are we doing now? You back? I've been trying to talk through it here. Hang with us, folks. We had this happen earlier off air, so he'll, he'll be here in just a sec. Oh, there you are. We got you back. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> connection going in and out a little, so. I think you're, you might be sitting on that string, you know, <laughs> between the cans. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, good uh, stuff, so man. That's that, super cool. That Eastern Iowa stuff. They shut it off at like seven o'clock at night, you know, <laughs> more internet. <laughs> so you guys need to get off them internets right now. <laughs> there. Well, good right. stuff, man. You know, and, and what a lot of tired. people don't, yeah, that's right. What a lot of people don't also know, man, is that the original formation of the all American kayak series, that was a product of several guys sitting around a campfire. If memory serves someplace in lacrosse, I think you guys were at an event and you had been rolling an idea around you, Josh, and was Troy there at that one? Um, or was it, there was, was it a, you and there was a pile of us there. Gotcha. And we were, we were in Linksville actually where I won the Bassmaster tournament out of this year. We were at the campground there and nice. we'd, 
we'd lost a few things in the Midwest. You know, we always had the, well, what, what the TOC was before it, before Hobie acquired it, you know, where it was the top, it was a top five in every local club, you know, and I was, I was fortunate enough to win that and got to know Cody. Cody Prather was one of the big, the big guys to put that on him and, right. you know, and, and then we lost the Midwest Kayak Fishing Series, which in 20, 2018, I believe, was the most ep- probably the most epic year of fishing in the Midwest. I've never seen guys fish as hard as they fish to try to win that. Dude, and it, Josh it, and I were looking at the, the championship. Tubes. We were looking at the championship yeah. event on Wanahu, looking at that roster oh my god like brady was like yeah. 15 14 or 15 at the time fishing but i mean the names yeah. in there you yep. josh marty christine you know the workmans i mean just yeah. the names of who's who in kayak fishing were in you know yeah. in that event yeah. yeah and i mean that's i i couldn't hold a candle to that group i mean that was you know that was second year of my career and i'd there was no way. I mean, them workman boys, James Francis, you know, Kenny McVeigh, Ken Shippey, uh, Richie McMichael, Mel Ash. I mean, you know, the, the Midwest finest, you know, these guys, these are the guys that I watched when I was coming up, you know, like right. God, these guys win everything, you know, and then, you know, and there's still a ton of anglers in the Midwest that are just hammers, you know, you got, yeah. You got Lance Bursch, you got Todd Martins. Todd's Todd's a solid angler. I mean, Richie's Richie's still hanging around. You got uh Lance, Lance Burris, Chad Davidson, Jordan Westerman. I mean, yep. you know, you got Brady. Brady's always he's always a something to be worried about when you show up at a tournament, you know. And I mean, there's just there's so many of them. That's the, you know, that's the point we, we make this all the time and, and people think it's a self-serving statement when we say it, but flat out when you fish the All-American Kayak Series, a bunch of the Midwest, you know, anglers are going to join there. And yes, these are some of the best anglers in the country, period, yeah. end of statement. There's, and it's, that's not a, an opinion that, I mean, that's a fact. And, you know, right. should you think otherwise, please come fish with us. You know, right. <laughs> it's yeah. because the thing I love about it too, is that not only are they some of the best anglers in the country, but it's one of the coolest groups I've ever hung out with, man. Just yeah. such good people, man. That yep. if you see another kayaker that's, you know, in the all American chances are they got your back, man. If something goes yeah. wrong, you know, you've got, you know, support out there. Yeah. We don't, we don't have the high, uh, you know, uh, pressure piece that goes on elsewhere. We got good payouts, man, that are coming right. as, you know, with, we start putting 7,500 anglers in our events you're going to make as much with us as you will anywhere in the country. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the cool thing I'm looking forward to is more and more people get on it, but yeah, man. So when you guys first formed this, the whole idea was to kind of fill that hole that the Midwest, uh, fishing kayak series was leaving with that. Yeah. You know, was yeah, to I mean, give something for the Midwest. Yeah. It's always, you know, the bigger organizations, they tend to stay down South because they do, they draw, they draw big numbers. They have a ton of anglers down there. And I mean, that's the key since I've said since day one, if a big tournament is in your area and you want it to be back, you need to be there. doesn't matter. Like, yep. Because that's what those tournaments are based off of, which is awesome. Like I've fished some of the top level events. I love them. Like they're well ran. Steve-O, AJ, they all do a killer job. I've been to Hobie Worlds and those guys do. It's, it's amazing. Like it's yep. the most amazing thing there is, you know, but the biggest thing is they have to have the support to keep doing it. Otherwise yeah. they're going to move it. You know, I mean, we don't like Iowa, you know, you, we literally the closest big lake we have is table rock. You know, we got the river, you know, and that, that always seems to draw, but when it comes to the local draw, it's not there. And it's, it's sad, 
Like it's it's sad to see it because I know they'd come back year after year. But so I mean, the all American the all American really fills that void and keeps you closer to home. And you said it the best, man. If you want these big events to be able to continue to come, we when we're making these decisions, we're working with local municipalities, we're working with local businesses in the area chambers, and we're trying to find ways to make these things um, you know, doable by, by working with the community. And the best thing we can do is have the support of the anglers coming in and fishing these things. Right. We try to, we try to set them up in a way, but like Okaboji, man, we're coming to Iowa. Um, you know, and Okaboji will continue to be in a top, you know, list of our schedule, you know, yeah. desires to go to because we get good support there. You know, the, the local community supports us and the anglers turn out, yeah. you know, and that's, yep. that's the key. As long as you got those two things in play, you know, then we can keep it as a top priority. It's when we lose one of those things that it starts to become, okay, I don't know if we can really afford to do that again. Do we want to go back there if we're only going to get 20 some odd guys to show up? Right. You know, yep. that we just have to, we have to be, you know, unfortunately to, to take this big circus around it, <laughs> you know, you got to keep the business side of it, you know, in, in exactly. Tune. Exactly. And that's the biggest key. You know, I've been on both sides of it. I see how it all works. And I mean, it's, it's tough and it's something that not a lot of guys look at, you know, I mean, but at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to, you know, is they, they have to have the support, you know, no matter what to keep rolling, you know, yep. and like if you take and you drop one of it out, you know, like if you lose your series, like it's, it's tough. Cause it's in your back to traveling all the time. And I mean, with this, with the way things are nowadays, it's, it's tough to go put on 30,000 miles a year, you know? Ooh. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? And hopefully, I mean, while the economy keeps doing what it's doing, you know, that's the beauty the love about staying in the Midwest is if you can be in that four to six hour run, man, that right. sure does make it a lot easier to get something handled. I wish yeah. I could do four to six hours. Um, I'm I'm out here in the boondocks dog in Colorado. So every every good place to fish for me is a twelve hour run, you know, but it's not I like it. It's just a U Haul away. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Move to Iowa, I'll put you on some deer. <laughs> My God. I'm not sure where I even start with trying to convince the wife to move to Iowa. Oh, I mean, what on. what do I go with there? I mean, <laughs> honey, do you like corn? Right. <laughs> The sweet corn's amazing. The tornadoes are always good. You know, like, I was gonna say <laughs> we got the river. I mean, you get her to move to lacrosse, like lacrosse is good. We were in Rochester for like 10 years or four years. I lived there 10. She was with me there for four. So yeah, yeah I mean, we, we had our taste of the of the Midwest up there, and it is gorgeous. No, what I'm I'm banking on is just trying to find a little winter haunt. I want a, a winter stay away in Missouri. Just yeah. like four months out of the year, man. Just let me get over to where where the water doesn't freeze over, right? So I can keep fishing, you know, and keep that keep feed the beast, right, for a little yeah. while, and then uh, then we can come back here. It's fine, you know. I don't yeah. mind driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's that's where we're at right now in Iowa. Is like it's it's too cold to get the kayak out, but it's not cold enough for ice yet. And Do you ice fish? Yes. We yeah. are, we, and I, I don't do it competitively cause it's my only downtime all year long, but right. my wife is crazy about ice fishing. I mean, so, break, break, break bread on this dude. I mean, it's pretty much a reason to drink beer in, in dangle of rod in the water. Right. I mean, is that nine, not, I've been bone dry for nine years. Like I just, I love, I love fishing for big, big bluegills, big panfish, big crappies is that's my big thing through the ice like all right all right i love and i'll tell you what like learning learning about winter fish teaches you a lot about spring fish really yeah yeah because well, like i don't know if you can see him back here but i got a couple of my bravo rods from clam outdoors there okay, you go Cl clam is my mothership of with black fish and all terrain so yeah. I got a couple of these, but I'm going to be honest with you. I have, I don't know if I'll have a chance to take them ice fishing because Colorado, you pretty much got to go to the mountains to do that, to get safe right. ice. I'm setting up extremely light 
vertical drop rigs here for yeah. smallmouth fishing here in, in Colorado, because I use 2d sonar, like some guys use forward facing. Yep. And so I want to be able to be right over top where my switch blade is coming out of the egg. And I want to drop vertical drop right on them and having a, a six and a half foot, seven foot rod. I can't do that half the time, you know? So yep. yeah, I got a couple of these Bravo rods here, man. I got a 32 and a 34 inch and uh, yeah. one's a medium, one's a medium light. And I'm like, that's my smally rod, yo. <laughs> Heck yeah. I, I'll put four pound test on that and go to work. <laughs> right. That's Boji is a place to ice fish. There you go. It is, it is literally a winter wonderland up there. Like, and there's giant gills, giant crappies, giant perch, giant walleyes. And there's just big fish in that water, dude. It is. If you've never been there, I'll tell you, get there because it is, it is at its prime. Like it is, it is the most epic fishing any time of year. Like I still went there. I went fish the tournament there in the fall and still put up 90, you know, and that was just literally flipping a wacky worm under docks, but you had to pick the docks apart just right to do it. But, and you're going to, like, I literally ran, I ran 15 pound braid to 20 pound floral leader. That's how far under the docks we were. You Is actually that, used floral. Yeah. They, wow. they got me talked into it with a wacky worm. And then I, I found a really easy knot. So like I can tie it on the water. And so I've been throwing it a little bit this year, but everything's still 98% braid. I was going to say what people don't realize is that if you look through your gear, you are all braid man through and yeah. through. And that's, yep. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And that's when, so that's the big, my big transition now is like, now that I bought a boat, like, and I'm standing up higher, you know, I have all my, all my gear is set up. Now I understand why guys use Fluoro because you have so much leverage when you're up on a boat. Totally. You know, when you're in a kayak it's you got to hit them you got to hit them in the face to stun them you know but when yep. like i'm literally there's i broke i broke hooks off on my braid setups because i'm yep. i have so much leverage on them yep and it's just yep. it's so oh, it's it's gonna be a whole new learning process for me you know going in the boat and doing that but because i've never you know that's never been my thing i started in a kayak and always kind of fished out of it so that will be the biggest because i came the other direction from a boat into kayak and it took me quite the shock to understand that hook set mentality of actions all of a sudden now you're really yeah. going to appreciate the moderate action you know yeah. me medium uh, blanks you know type thing there's going to be a time and place fish in a carolina rig where you can actually like swing into a hook set because you got yep. space to do so you yep. know, yeah, it's a, it's a different, and a two pound fish isn't going to take the bow of your boat and move you around. No, you're going to horse it around and bring it up in the boat. Where in a right. kayak, a two pounder will sit there and move the nose of your, you know, yak around yeah. all over the place. That's, I was so excited to boat flip my five pounder and I caught out a brushy that time under the <laughs> boat. I'm like, I, I saw this on TV once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's I awesome stuff. It. Well, listen, man. So what is, before we let you go here, what does 2024 look like? I know life's going to be starting to get in the way a little bit, so it's going to be a toned down uh, feel for the champ, but uh, what, what, what can, where can we catch you? Are you, are you still going to be able to try to squeeze in a couple or where do you think it's oh, going to yeah. be? It, it's definitely going to be a semi-retirement year. Uh, I got a daughter graduating. Uh, I got a 10 day, 10 day honeymoon with the wife this year. And I want to try to get my garage put up. So I got to kind of put, put fishing on the back burner for about a year. But I mean, I'll, I'm still going to try to be at Minocqua. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to do Boji and then try to make it up to the river. Cause the river always fishes well for me that time of year. Oh, yeah. And, but I, beyond traveling that, I, I don't think I'll see, I'll, you'll see me much at anything. It's with having, getting the daughter off to college and everything else. It's like, yeah, well, we better. And you said the W word wife that took place this year as well, didn't it, buddy? 
that was yep that was in july that was literally literally seven days before i won the bassmaster at lacrosse right well congratulations on that i know i said it before but here on air congratulations Uh oh thank you there you are and i've and she's she's amazing she takes good care of me that's awesome that's it's a needed commodity man that support structure you gotta have it right absolutely absolutely there's no doubt you you have to have everybody has to be working together to make it work because oh yeah i know like for me i drive truck through the week i'm usually gone a couple three days a week i'd come home on thursday i'd dump my dump my work bag out i'd load my load my fishing bag and be back on the road and then i'd come home sunday and she had everything handled for me like she takes care of everything i mean I'd, wow she's the greatest thing ever yeah that's like, awesome and, man and literally pats me on the butt going out the door monday morning to get back in the truck you know and i mean <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better support system you know my kids my kids understand you know they they get it but now it's now it's time to give them a year you know and get my get my oldest one graduated and off to college and then i'll be back well, we're gonna i was gonna say we're gonna miss you for a season out there but uh all right, now you're not going to be out there, so that's one down. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me; I'll, I'll give you all the hints. <laughs> right, right, yeah, the hints. Right. So, lacrosse. What do you think? Okay, so I want you to go up to Wabasha. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just start fine on grass, four. <laughs> fine grass, throw frog. Repeat if right. necessary. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Listen, brother, it was an absolute pleasure watching you, competing against you, working with you. Um, I can't thank you enough personally for this opportunity to come work with the All-American. Um, I knew you were leaving some big, big shoes behind, and, and it, it helped motivate me to, to make sure I'm bringing what I can to the team uh, and filling in holes where I can and helping uh, with with this. and. Dude, this was, like I said, this was a season for the books. A lot of records were set. I don't know how long it's going to take for those records to get taken down or to be beat, if they ever will be. Um, but it's so cool to yeah. see you stamp your name where it rightfully should be, which is in the history, you know, books of the All-American Kayak Series, dude. You're one of the founding members of this thing, and this is super cool, man. Thank you so much for an awesome year. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I mean, thanks. You know, all the competitors that I fished against this year, you know, you guys, you guys are the ones that do it because you guys are the ones that push me. You know, if I show up and you guys don't care, then I, I it's just like, all right, whatever. But right. all the times I've heard, I'm going to beat you. All right, let's go. <laughs> Johnny Denton, Johnny Denton. He's my, he's my boy and I'm his Hell uncle. Yeah. You know, he, he watched me at 13, 13, 14. He watched me spank a couple key fish after Andy took the lead on me that day. And he, he hasn't let me live it down yet. He's like, I had to <laughs> sit there and watch you. <laughs> yep. I love like, John. Dude, you could have pulled up. Like, I, it don't matter. There's plenty of them in there. But, you know. John's, good. John's good people, man. I, I love me some John Denton. He's a good dude. Come on, connection. All right, hang on. We got one more connection. We're not gonna. He, we're not gonna disconnect. Yes, there a, he is. He's a heck of an angler, you know. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of them that are great. That's awesome. There's a bunch. All right, of them brother. Well, listen. Are great people. Stick with me here through this. Here, we're gonna roll the outro, and then you and I will meet after uh, after the 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 thing uh, closes out here, and we'll we'll finish this up. Folks, make sure to smash that subscribe and hit the Facebook page there for us here with uh, the All-American Kayak Series. Uh, that is a major, major uh, big help for us is the subscriptions out there. looks like we're having some trouble with TC's connection there. But, yeah, your support, man, that subscribe button, that's a massive big help for us. Follow us, of course. Follow the page. If you're a registered angler, uh, join the group out there at, uh, for the All-American. Uh, that's uh, one, of the, one of the best ways we can uh, keep the support rolling from uh, from all sides for our, our sponsors, so on and so forth. As always, folks, tight lines, be safe.